I've got a challenge for you. Go into any gaming discussion forum and post the following sentence. The Epic Game Store is better than Steam. Then, see how long it takes before your inbox becomes flooded with hate mail and threats of violence. In today's crowded market of PC gaming, competition is fierce. Ubisoft, EA, Blizzard, Epic Games, Rockstar, it seems like every publisher has their own proprietary launcher these days. Despite the sheer number of competitors in this market, Steam still stands as the fan-favorite digital download distribution platform, and for good reason. The application itself is easy to use and has loads of cool features like reviews, community hubs, and cloud saves. But there's one category where Epic Games has an obvious advantage over Steam, NFT and crypto games. Steam outright banned all crypto and blockchain games from their platform a while back, citing reasons such as prevalence of scams, volatility of crypto, and the inability for Valve to provide refunds or support for items purchased using crypto. While this move may have caused outrage amongst crypto bros, gamers worldwide would soon rejoice as the only thing that they hate more than crypto is a day one DLC. You see, crypto games have a bit of a reputation for being some of the laziest, overpriced, uninspired, and all-around worst games ever created. But in an attempt to set themselves apart from Steam, Epic recently announced that they would be adding 20 crypto and blockchain games to the platform to pave the way for new and innovative gameplay experiences. So is this the final nail in the coffin for Steam? Are they really missing out on the future of gaming by banning all blockchain games? Well, only one way to find out. Searching for the keyword NFT in the Epic Game Store brings us to the comprehensive list of all blockchain games on the platform. A lot of these are marked as coming soon, but there's about a dozen that we can play today. Interestingly, each one of these games comes with a lengthy disclaimer regarding the risks of using crypto. This is a blockchain slash NFT game. Please be advised. Before purchasing any cryptocurrency or digital assets, players should do their own research. Player purchases through third-party marketplaces are made at their own risk, and Epic Games does not encourage the purchase or sale of any cryptocurrency or digital asset. Additionally, all of these games are ESRB-rated adults-only for cash prizes. In my 25 years of gaming, I've actually never played a game with an AO rating, so this almost feels illegal. I wonder if they'll ask me to upload my ID to verify my age, because we wouldn't want kids participating in unregulated gambling, would we? Regardless, I've chosen the following three crypto games to play today. Dino Dash, Polygod, and Striker Manager 3. Dino Dash is a fast-paced hover racer that will put your skills of racing and reaction time to the test. See if you have what it takes to win. Uh, there's no trailer for the game, but judging by the screenshots, perhaps a better title might be My First Unreal Engine Game. The blockchain warning for this game reads, The integration of blockchain brings key utilities to the Dino Dash product, enhancing its values and offering unique advantages to the players. By leveraging NFTs, Dino Dash ensures that players have true ownership and control over most of their in-game assets. Each Dino NFT is uniquely owned by a player, empowering them to freely transfer, trade, or sell sell their digital collectibles without any restrictions. This utility allows players to build a valuable collection and have full control over their assets, fostering a sense of ownership and investment in the game. Of course, none of this matters if the game sucks. Who cares if they're the rightful owner of a limited edition one of one steaming turd? It's still a piece of sh at the end of the day. While this one downloads, let's look at some of the other. Oh, what? It's already done. Wait, this is only 1.5 gigabytes? Now, that's pretty small for an Unreal Engine game, but maybe they just have some really efficient assets. Oh well, let's give the game a try. Uh, okay. Now what? Nothing's happening. The game is just stuck on the splash screen. Okay, I'll relaunch and try again. What the hell's going on? When I try and type in my username, nothing happens. This pop-up window here is completely frozen. Nothing I did seemed to make it work, but I happened to click over onto my second monitor to check a Discord message while trying to log in, and when I clicked back over to Dino Dash, all the characters that I had entered finally appeared. So it seems that something is seriously wrong with this login screen, and the only way to get it to work is by minimizing the game after every click and key press, otherwise your keystrokes don't register. Already off to a great start. After conquering the first challenge of Dino Dash, we finally reached the main menu. Let's see what graphic settings we have available before playing the game. Oh, it looks like they haven't added that feature. They also haven't added the store or character select either. Everything is coming soon. Well, except for the NFTs. Those are always for sale. Alright, well, let's hope that maybe they finished the gameplay at least?
I don't even know where to start. If this gameplay footage doesn't speak for itself, let me explain to you just how painful playing this game is. The controls feel like they were designed by someone who has never played a video game in their life. You use the up and down arrow keys to accelerate and decelerate, and left and right to lean, but you also use A and D to turn. Confusing, I know. Basically, you have to press both A and left at the same time to turn left. Also, you press B to boost. If you'd like to simulate the experience of playing Dino Dash, follow along and place your fingers on the keys shown on screen. Congratulations, you are now one step closer to developing Carpal Tunnel. The extremely floaty nature of this hover bike makes controlling your character even more difficult. If you so much as brush against the wall, you'll fly into the air and off the track, guaranteeing that you lose the race. Or if you're unlucky, you'll just clip through the floor. The selection of assets here is really something else. There is no semblance of cohesion or art direction at all. It feels like they just bought whichever assets were on sale at the time and said, yup, that looks good, and then plonked it down on the map. This reminds me of one of the parks that I would create in Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 as a kid. The performance is, as expected, horrible. This disaster of a game barely manages to sustain 50 FPS while having the graphical fidelity of a game released in 2004. I'm up against 7 other AI players, and beating them was no challenge at all. There's this stock audio epic EDM song playing in the background, reminiscent of a 2014 YouTube prank channel intro. However, once this song finishes playing, it doesn't loop. In fact, it never plays again. Ever. Finish the race and go to another track? Sorry, you only have the privilege of hearing this beautiful song once per play session. There are very few sound effects in this game, and no attempt at all has been made to mix or balance the audio. The motorbike sound is a looping engine noise, but they screwed up the loop point, so there's this very noticeable transient click every time the sound loops. After finishing my first race in first place, we get congratulated with a scoreboard, which is shown on screen for about 6 frames before disappearing. Well, back to the main menu, I guess. Up next, we have the creatively named water map. After flipping my hover bike over and losing control for about a solid minute, I returned to the track and continued forward, only to be struck by a flying banana from nowhere. The impact force from this banana caused my bike to clip slightly below the track, where I remained for the rest of the race. Because I was underneath the map, I couldn't trigger any of the checkpoints, so even though I made it all the way to the finish line, nothing happened. Pressing escape doesn't open the menu, so I had to alt F4 to quit the game since I didn't find out until later that the menu key is actually tab. Was this game designed by aliens? Alright, one last race, the challenging space map. Wait a minute, what's this? An on-screen joystick? We have three options for game mode. Practice, 1v1, or 8v8. Wait, wait, what? This is an 8 player racing game, there's no teams, it's not 8v8, this would just be 8 player free for all. Anyway, I picked this mode. Despite me choosing the 8 player mode, there were only 3 other racers, which is strange since there isn't even a 4 player option. The camera on this map was placed so close to the ground and behind the player that I couldn't even see where I was going. I guess I was too close to the AI player for too long and the game decided it had enough and chucked me a million feet into the air. After I respawned, the checkpoint system had a total meltdown. This resulted in the game forcing me to respawn every few seconds, but it didn't seem to impact my ability to finish the race. Once I crossed the finish line, the following text box appeared. Having fun? Check out how you could be earning cash while racing at dinodash.io. Well, I guess I'll visit this website. So it looks like I can purchase my very own Dino Dash NFT for the low price of 40 uh, whatever the hells. Okay, so these are apparently Polygon tokens. I think they're called Matic. They're about 70 cents a pop, so that would mean that this randomly generated JPEG is going to run me about $40. No shot on buying this. While we're here, let's take a look at the team behind Dino Dash. I always love looking at the work history of the people involved in creating a crypto game. Based on my experience from playing over 20 NFT games, usually the founders are all brothers or family members, the average age of the C-suite is 25, and their lead developer has the game development experience of watched a few YouTube tutorials. Would you look at that? We've got two brothers as CEO and CTO. Let's dive into their history, since they have their LinkedIn pages linked. 
The CEO was an aerospace engineer at government for 20 years. Now, which government? That's unspecified. He was also CEO at a supplements company that he founded, which looks to just be a white label vitamin dropshipping project. And then he was the CEO of Alfax Studios, the masterminds behind Dino Dash. The CTO is the little brother of the CEO, and it looks like he just finished his first year in college. Congrats, man. I hope you got good grades. And the lead developer. Yeah, I'm not convinced that this is even a real person. His only experience listed on LinkedIn is developing Dino Dash, and he lives in Alaska. This might actually be a grizzly bear pretending to be a human, which explains why the control scheme for the game is so bizarre. This might be the most stereotypical crypto game leadership team I've seen yet. That's pretty impressive. So this game was a travesty, to say the least. I would be embarrassed to be associated with a product of such low quality, to be honest. This is so unfinished that it's not even funny, and the fact that they're selling $40 NFTs, and people are actually buying them, is kinda just sad. You heard of early access before, but Dino Dash takes the concept to a whole new level. If this game was a stake, it would be so raw that the cow hasn't even been born yet. I give Dino Dash the rating of low effort asset dump out of 10. Alright, next game. Polygod is a tower rush video game, winner takes all, which pits players in games featuring two players 1v1 in which the objective is to destroy the most opposing towers with the destruction of the king's tower being an instantaneous win. Jeez, what a run on sentence. Tower rush game? I've never heard of that term before. There are no screenshots or gameplay footage on the store page, just this cinematic trailer, which features some very stiff and amateur animation. Well, let's jump in. After about 30 seconds of being stuck on a black screen, the main menu finally loads. Please be advised that this game is in its beta stage, and we are actively working to improve and refine the gameplay experience. If you encounter bugs, please leave feedback. There's even an additional warning directly below this first warning, again saying may contain bugs and subject to change. Now it can't be a good sign when a game needs two adjacent disclaimers about being unfinished on the very first screen. Anyway, let's start the game. Uh, what? 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 I'm at a loss for words. This game is like something that you would encounter in a fever dream. Despite defying all logical examples of what one would consider a video game, Polygon is somehow available for download on the Epic Games Store. <sighs> okay, let's take this one step at a time. The main menu, and most of the game, uses this eyesore of a Nordic rune font. The available cards for purchase window on the left here doesn't seem to do anything, so you can't purchase any cards. The revive tab also doesn't do anything, but it does play an extremely loud thunderclap sound every time you click the button. However, the sound that they used is just a recording of an entire thunderstorm, not just the initial boom. So after you click it, you just continue to hear thunder roaring in the distance when you leave the page. The village and forge tabs also do nothing, and I couldn't figure out what the lobby tab was supposed to do. But the offline tab seems to be where we can actually play the game. I guess this is supposed to be like an auto battler or tower defense type game, and your units are represented by these collectible cards. As soon as I loaded into a match, I was immediately warned that my video memory had been exhausted. Now, I have 8GB of VRAM, so I think that this is more of the developer's failure to optimize than anything with my system. Regardless, the game looks like crap anyway. The UI is an unintelligible disaster, and the instructions are not particularly helpful. I clicked on all of the cards at the bottom of the screen to summon my warriors, and then sat and watched as five of my soldiers were unable to win a fight against just one enemy. After about a minute, all of my warriors died, and since I didn't have any cards left, I just watched as the enemy units entered my base and destroyed my towers. Defeat. I'm uninstalling this. I almost forgot that this was advertised as a crypto game, but what part of this game has anything to do with crypto? How would crypto or a blockchain even make sense in this game? Beats me. I went to the game's website to see if I could get any more information, but the only thing that I could find was a place where you could stake your crypto with them in exchange for a 3% APR, paid in the form of a token called GOL. 
Fitting name that must be short for gullible. This token has a trading volume so low that it barely exists, so good luck trying to sell this to anyone. Despite this, more than 7,500 crypto wallets currently hold the gullible token. Again, just showing that crypto gamers are more interested in trying to flip tokens for a profit than actually playing any sort of game. I give Polygod a score of, I can't even believe this exists, out of 10. Okay, so I have time for one more game today. Let's pick something that looks somewhat playable. This one's called Striker Manager 3. I've never heard of Striker Manager 1 and 2, but apparently they're mobile games and they seem to be pretty well received. This game is developed by the Barcelona-based company Uplay Online. They have a pretty respectable catalog of previous games, including the YouTuber's Life series and a few other management sims. It looks like Striker Manager 3 is their first game to include crypto, so I'm curious to see how it fares. Wow, I can't believe that I'm actually kind of excited to play a crypto game for once. Let's dive in. After having some issues with logging in, I was able to get into the game and start with the tutorial. Now, I've never played a football manager game before, nor is it something that I'm particularly interested in, but the tutorial does do a good job explaining how to play the game. Striker Manager is a management sim, plain and simple. You take on the role of a football team's manager and perform activities such as hiring staff, recruiting players, signing sponsors, and building an attractive stadium to bring in as many fans as possible. As this is an NFT game, of course you have the ability to buy and sell virtual land. Different land plots have different bonuses, and plots that are in the more desirable areas attract more fans, or at least that's my understanding. I completed the tutorial and then watched my team play a game of football. Man, they suck. No wonder the stadium is nearly empty. Since this is a management sim, you're not required to watch any of the games. They're simply simulated in the background. But in case you are interested in watching your team play, they did model and animate everything, even though it looks kind of goofy. The game is eerily quiet, as there is no sound except for when you're watching a game. But since the bulk of the gameplay is spent performing management activities, I guess you're just expected to put your own music on in the background. I don't really have much else to say about this. It's a free-to-play football management game that has all the classic pitfalls of every other free-to-play game. As usual, you have to wait a long time for upgrades to complete, or you can pay a fee of real money to skip. Better players and plots of land, of course, cost more money than worse players, which makes the game pretty pay to win. And we're not talking like five bucks a pop. These guys cost hundreds of dollars. There's a lot of player created leagues that you can join in game though, so it seems that there's at least somewhat of a player base. But in conclusion, this is pretty much just another generic, free to play, pay to win game. It's not a genre of game that I would be interested in, but it seems to be competent albeit expensive. I don't really see any benefits for using crypto here. It kind of just seems like another way of achieving the same outcome, except more complicated since you have to understand how to use a crypto wallet. Although you don't even have to actually use crypto. You can just buy players with a credit card. So if anything, it's just using crypto as an alternate payment system. Regardless, the blockchain doesn't bring any gameplay innovations, just new ways for you to lose money investing in virtual football players. Yeah, I'm never going to play this game again. Even if I wanted to play a football manager, I would much rather just spend the $60 to get something like Sega's FM23. I don't really understand the appeal of a pay to win management sim with players that cost more than the average monthly income in some countries. But if you like football manager, then I'd love to hear your thoughts on Striker Manager 3 down in the comments. All right, well, that was definitely an interesting experience. There are still a bunch more of these crypto games on the Epic Game Store that I haven't even looked at yet. Should I keep diving deeper into this cesspit to see if there's a diamond at the bottom? Or do we write this entire concept of crypto games off as a failure? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to be entered in a contest to win a free NFT. That's all for today. I'm John, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.